Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to yet another T. Martin Airlines flight. It's been a couple of days since our last departure, but I'm excited to see your smiling faces, and I thank you for choosing this very adventurous itinerary. We are going to be taking this Beechcraft Baron G58. We are going to be taking off from Seoul, South Korea. A lot of people say Seoul, but I think it's Se Seoul. Seoul, something like that. It's like Seoul, but you put it together. Either way, we're going to be taking off from South Korea, and we are going to be flying straight north across the DMZ into North Korea. So uh, keep in mind, this is a one-way flight. If you have any loved ones, friends, or family, or anything you want to shoot a text, just let them know because you've come to the right place to get nuked. This, this is going to be fun. I'm excited, and uh, let's, let's go ahead and get it started. So here we go. This thing actually looks pretty sick. This is a uh, kind of like a little, little twin-engine prop plane here. Wing-mounted engines there look pretty interesting. It's quite spacious as well. You've got two seats here up front along with four in the back, a nice little fold-out table, and, and ample legroom for sure. You've even got some nice storage options back here in the back, and then there should be some storage underneath as well. So this thing, uh, it, it should be nice and comfy for this flight. You know, I, I really kind of like the look of this thing. I, I feel like... I don't know, it's just kind of a kind of a neat little plane. So we're gonna go ahead and release this parking brake and we are gonna go ahead and take off. Let's uh, buck this pony and head to North Korea. I don't even know what to say, but yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna hop in the saddle here and we're gonna take off. So right there in front of us, that's actually, I'm just gonna say Seoul, all right? Most people in the US say Seoul, South Korea. I don't think that's technically the correct pronunciation, but we're Americans, we kind of do what we want and tend to be, a, you know, not very, um, you know, respectful of, of other origins and customs that aren't our own. I'm just kidding. I, I just, I feel like I'm doing it a disservice every time I say Seoul because it just doesn't sound right. So I'm going to say Seoul just because that's what I've heard the most of. But um, interesting enough, Seoul, South Korea is one of the most advanced cities in the world and South Korea as a whole is one of the most advanced countries in the world. And uh, I've always kind of heard that, but I've obviously never seen it. I would love to travel out here and see it one day. But, I mean, just take a look out your window here. This is gorgeous. This is a giant city amongst a bunch of just beautiful, lush mountains. You've got all kinds of sports fields and, and you know, good highway systems. You've got these nice rivers running through town. And it just, it, it looks like a beautiful city. We've got skyscrapers over here. At night, it's supposed to be super, super beautiful out here. All the lights and stuff like that, which we're going to have to do a, a night flight through some of the major cities at some point. I feel like we do get to see more of, of the the world in the daytime, but we'll, we'll have to check out some at night. But yeah, dude, I mean, this is this is gorgeous. I, I, would, I would definitely travel somewhere like this. Apparently, it's actually a super fantastic place to live as well. So like I said, one of the most advanced countries in the world, they actually have the, the fastest internet speeds of anywhere in the world on average per citizen. Technically, like there are places that have faster like overall internet speeds, but like in terms of, of what everyone has access to, on your cell phone, so your, your mobile connection, the average is around 52.4 megabytes a second across the entire country for every single per person in that population. That's crazy. The average in the US is about 21.3. So it's it's more than double of what we have here in the States. And uh, they're like, you know, LAN connections, what you plug into into the wall and stuff like that. Your, your PC is plugged into and your Wi-Fi and whatever else. Those are also much better as well. Not quite double, but uh, still leading the world in connectivity, which is, is great. You know, obviously, especially in today's day and age, that's super, super important. Now, uh, they've also got the most dense high-speed railway system, so obviously public transport is super, super important for your people to be able to get to work and to leisure and stuff like that. It's something the U.S. needs a lot of help with. We don't really have anything in that regard. We've got buses and greyhounds, but no nice high-speed rails or anything like that. Elon Musk needs to, uh, needs to step his game up in that department. But yeah, that's good. Uh, it's actually, in 2020, it was voted the best place in the world to have kids by the UN, by the United Nations. So, I mean, I knew it was nice there. I didn't know it's as nice as it is. I mean, you guys can see, this is just, it's a gorgeous city. It's obviously a very compact city. You know, it's kind of like a New York for us or something like that. But it is so pretty. And it's amongst all these these nice mountains and you can see lots of parks and greenery and stuff down there. Like, it... 
it looks like a fantastic place to live, and it, it supposedly is. So the, the kid thing is like based on their, their uh, availability for healthcare, for education, and for nutrition. Apparently they, they take health and fitness very seriously there. So seriously, in fact, that the percentage of their population that are overweight is 3.2. 3.2% of people in South Korea are overweight. I don't think you want to know what the American percentage is. I looked it up and I almost vomited. 69%. And 30% of that, so like, you know, 30, 37 or so percent are overweight, but then another 30% are obese in America. I, I, didn't, I couldn't even find like an obese statistic on South Korea. That's how, how fit they are, how crazy that is. You know, I, I don't think you'll find a lot of South Koreans going to McDonald's and, and, you know, eating unhealthily, eating fast food, burgers, that kind of stuff. They take their health very seriously. They've got longer, healthier lives because of it. And uh, just overall, a, a very, very good quality of life. I can't get over how gorgeous this is. Seriously. Look at this, dude. Look at these mountains. So to be in such good shape, they've got to play a lot of sports, right? You'd be correct. Their national sport is actually Taekwondo, which I found kind of interesting. I took Taekwondo back in the day. I ended up being, I didn't quite get black belt. What's right under the black? Is it, is it brown or purple? I'm pretty sure it's brown. I think it goes purple, brown, and then black. I got to brown belt. Didn't quite get my black, didn't get like 12th degree black belt, or I don't even know how high it ends up going. Had aspirations to do that, ended up getting into, into other sports and stuff, but I thought that was kind of cool. So Taekwondo, it's a sport that was created like 2000 some years ago. Teaching is actually one of the most sought after careers in South Korea and one of the most like well respected and notable and just like looked up to careers. Teachers are paid very, very well in comparison to, to like what you would get here. And uh, you know, obviously I, I, think, I think their priorities are in the right spot. You know, they, they, they really focus on having active, healthy lifestyles, eating good food, focus on the children and bringing them up right and that next generation and that kind of thing. Basically the complete opposite of what we do here in the States. So, I mean, they're, they are definitely, definitely doing something right out here. Let me just make sure we're going the right direction. It looks like we're going, uh, we actually, where is this DMZ? Oh no, we're, we're still a ways away. I found it, okay. So this this right here is the border of, of North and South Korea called the DMZ, the Demilitarized Zone. And we are gonna be going to the Joint Security Area, AKA Truce Village, which should be kind of just off of this, this little body of water right here. So it looks like we're heading in the right direction. We're gonna go ahead and unpause and uh, we're gonna keep heading that way. So it's it's gonna be kind of interesting. Their, their whole like border situation and everything is, is pretty interesting. But yeah, they've got a lot of, of good things happening out here. Very high quality of life, just very advanced quality of life. It, it, it's supposedly one of the best places to live on earth, which is, is kind of interesting. Uh, not as much like, I, I wouldn't say like the earning potential and stuff like that. Like, you know, the U.S. is the land of capitalism. We have, you know, entrepreneurs and millionaires and billionaires and stuff like that. I don't think they really have that, but it's just like the, the average person, they focus on giving everyone a really good quality of life. Uh, South Korea is very superstitious, particularly around red ink and the number four. They both kind of represent like death and, and, and just bad vibes. Like if you write somebody's name in red ink, it means that they're either dead or they're gonna die very soon. So, you know, if, if you live in South Korea, please don't write my name in, in red ink or anything like that. The number four, I guess, is close to their like lettering or, or their word for death, like the, the way it's shaped. So uh, they, they don't use that. Like in elevators and stuff, they'll have, I think an H instead of a four, which is interesting. There's a law that if you're doing online banking or online shopping, You've got to use Internet Explorer, which is kind of interesting. Obviously, a very technologically inclined people, you know, again, the fastest Internet speeds, a lot done online, but you have to use Internet Explorer. I, I don't know if that's like they can track it better, if it's got more security or something like that out there, but that's that's interesting. The only time I use Internet Explorer is to go download Chrome when I have a new PC. I did it recently, like last week when I got this thing. So, uh, you know, kind of, kind of weird there. I, that's... That's odd. Just look at this, dude, we've got like nice city off to the right. We've got these these farm fields and stuff, lots of greenery and trees. You've got a, a football pitch and a track and field set up down there. I mean, it, it just, it, 
it looks really nice. Lots of, of, you know, colorful buildings and architecture and stuff like that. You know, keep in mind, a lot of this is based off satellite imagery. So Flight Sim's kind of putting random buildings in there that it thinks they might look like. This isn't all going to be 100% exactly what it looks like. But I, I th this looks like a gorgeous place. It, it really, really does. Uh, we, we should be starting to get a little bit closer here. So I think, yeah, we want to we want to go a little bit north. This thing juts out, and then you follow this to get to those two. And uh, we're, we're getting very, very close to the border. Take this in, because it should be a lot different when we cross the border. I mean, just look at this. You've got nice little cities and pockets of people and little communities and, and just very built up, very, you know, kind of modernized type country. It should be a lot different the second we cross that border, which is going to be kind of interesting to, to compare and contrast. Got to go a little bit more north here, and uh, we're going to head up out there. Now, the last fun fact about South Korea that I've got for you guys is, I'm um, probably going to butcher this name, Haesingdang Park. It's um, it's park for, uh, <clears throat> I mean... You guys get the gist. So yeah, we're making our way to the demilitarized zone, aka the DMZ here, and it's basically a, a stretch of the border that, that pretty much splits the north and south. So this down here is all South Korea, this up here is North Korea, it also borders with China. So this DMZ, it's uh, about 160 miles long, and it's, let me let me get us back up here, I wanna make sure we're going in the right direction. Dude, this plane is so fast, we're gonna catch up to it really, really quickly, we gotta be careful. It, it's about two and a half miles wide at most parts, and it's just heavily, heavily regulated, tons of military guarding it, stuff like that. Like, if you think the US-Mexico border is bad, this is 10 times worse. We're gonna be heading to the Joint Security Area, AKA Truce Village, which is the most, just famous part of it. It's where a lot of the, the political meetings and, and stuff like that will happen. They'll trade prisoners of war back and forth. And it's it's the only place in the zone where it's like heavily fortified and there's military from both north and south sitting there facing each other. Like there's cool pictures online where you see them like literally facing each other and it's like you, you cannot move. Uh, you know, up up until 2018 it was it was bad. Like, you know, they had tons of, of, you know, issues and shootings and stuff like that. They've recently made it a little bit better in terms of, uh, I don't even think there are people there with guns anymore. They're supposed to be unarmed security guards. They used to have all kinds of turrets and landmines and, and defenses and stuff like that, but they really kind of tapered back on that because it's become such a popular spot. There's there's a lot of tourists that go there. There's like 100,000 tourists that visit this place every year. We should be coming up on it here. It should be right off to the left of this. But uh, if you go as a tourist, you actually have to sign a waiver that says, the visit to the JSA will entail entry into a hostile area and possibility of injury or death as a direct result of enemy action. I read it straight from the thing here. So you basically got to sign away like, hey, I realize I'm going into a war zone. Is it an active war zone right now? No. But it could be, it, it, you know, anything could happen at any moment. Now, is it that bad? Probably not. I mean, there's like photos of, of Trump with Kim Jong-un and stuff over there and stuff like that. But there have been times where there has been some weird stuff going down. And I believe this is it right here. We should see like a main building and then like a lot of like little smaller, almost, you know, mobile home looking buildings, kind of smaller rectangular ones. This is it right here. So we are currently flying over the DMZ. This is the actual JSA, which is kind of like their meeting point for diplomacy and stuff like that. And uh, as we, we venture off this way, we're going to be leaving South Korea behind. Beautiful, green cities, all kinds of stuff like that. Look at what's in front of us. A lot more barren. Now, there, there are little pockets in cities and stuff like that, but a lot more brown and a lot less going on. You guys remember all those nice little suburbs and little towns and stuff like that? You don't, you don't really have that out here. This, this is North Korea, which I, I've, I've got some facts about this. Just gonna put a disclaimer out there. These are American propaganda that I'm about to tell you, cause I'm just a dumb American. I don't want like, you know, a van to show up in my house in the middle of the night and I'd have a sack thrown over my head and I'm thrown into it or something like that. Not a lot is officially known about North Korea. What we do know, they don't really want you to know. Like a, a lot of it, it's just a very, very reclusive, very closed off, very sketchy. Is that a good word? I, I don't know. Like it, it's a nation that, that kind of has shut itself off from the world. 
it's obviously, you know, this totalitarian dictatorship where the people are not treated well. It's a very poor country, very harsh living conditions, and, and just like, you know, one of the worst places on earth to live. We're leaving one of the best places on our behind back there, and we're going into one of the worst. So we're gonna set our sights on Pyongyang, which should be up here along this river, somewhere in here. So we've gotta go pretty much directly northwest. We're just gonna aim northwest and head in that direction. And uh, I'm gonna give you guys some facts about North Korea. Again, stupid American facts. It, I don't really know what I'm talking about. Please don't kidnap me. I mean, to be fair, it is a beautiful country, right? Like, I'm talking about the landscape here. Like, look look at all these, you know, green mountains, lush little forests and, and jungles and stuff like that. We've got these nice rivers, lots of little communities dotting all over the place. Not nearly as, as nice or advanced as what South Korea was, but in terms of topography and the actual, you know, physical land beneath us, it, it, does, it does look pretty nice. Ooh, look at that little house up on the hill. That's pretty cool. Now, that's, that's about the only nice thing about it that we're going to talk about today. But it, it does look nice, to be fair. Now, uh, the, the country of North Korea has around 25 and a half million people. And uh, it's been ruled by the same family for the past, like, seven, eight, nine decades that, uh, that it's been around. So, you know, all these people are under this totalitarian dictatorship and the, the Un family. And... Uh, the good news is, is they actually do have a choice. They have elections. They hold an election every five years. So anywhere where the people can actually choose their leader is obviously a very, very good thing. Uh, the only problem is there's only one option on those ballots. So every five years they, they hold an election where you can only elect one person, which I, I, thought, I thought was kind of funny. Uh, you know, technically the country is led by a dead man. The, I, I don't know if it's Kim Jong-un's dad or grandfather I, I think it might be his father uh is the the total leader for all of eternity like that that's what he's he's known as so technically kim jong-un is only stepping in for him temporarily but his body is being preserved and he is the leader for all of eternity so just you know keep that in mind he, he's gonna be coming back at some point maybe him and, and walt disney or something like that but um yeah so uh everything is obviously very very controlled. I, I think even to like a, a, your lifestyle and your living conditions and your food like that is all controlled. It's all provided by the government, which I guess is nice. Now that the problem is, is over 40% of the population is undernourished. So they, they do have shortages. They, they, you know, have gone through periods of very rough times with famine and stuff like that. Uh, the, I don't think they make a ton of money. I think in terms of, of, you know, production. They're one of the largest seafood exporters. They also, the government makes a lot of money from like counterfeit American $100 bills, counterfeit pharmaceuticals. Like they make a bunch of fake Viagra and send it over to, to Japan and stuff like that. I'm sure they do have some industry, but obviously a, a lot of the stuff online about North Korea is negative. So I was, I was trying to find interesting facts that weren't just negative, but it was like 99.89 nine percent negative so uh it's uh it, it's kind of rough uh in terms of control over the population it's insanity like you, you you cannot be yourself you cannot be an individual you are just there you are a being to support the supreme leader kim jong-un so uh you know internet pretty much non-existent there is kind of like this country contained internet where the government overrules it it's free if for anybody who could afford a pc which isn't many people uh, not many people use this at all, but it, it's like 28 websites that are all government-owned, government-controlled, government-sponsored. They curate all the content, that sort of thing. Same thing with TV. There are three TV channels run by the government, only government-sponsored, approved programming. Even the music is controlled. You, you, you can't listen to music outside of what the government wants you to listen to. So basically what you have is a country full of brainwashed people. They, they don't know anything about anything that's going on in the world outside of North Korea. They don't even think that North Korea is North Korea. They think North Korea is Korea. They don't know that there's a split. You don't want to think, oh, what's South Korea? Why, why would they split the North and the South? No, there's, there's just a Korea, according to them. They have no window, no view of the outside world. They have no idea what's going on, except for what the government is telling them, which 
is obviously an awful thing. Like, I, I can't even imagine. That's just so unfair. And it's just, you know, generations and generations of families that don't know anything different. But at the same time, it almost makes me wonder, is that better for them? Like, think about it. If your living conditions are awful, that's one thing. But if you know there's better just beyond that border, I feel like that makes it worse. I feel like if you think, hey, I have my supreme leader putting food on my table, at least most of the time, I'm thankful for him, maybe that makes those harsh conditions better. I mean, I, I can't say anything to like, you know, defend him or anything like that, but I'm just saying like, if you don't know any better, then technically that's just how life is. And maybe for those people, since they can't have any better, Maybe that's better for them, is what I'm trying to say. And it's just, it's it's awful that you even have to, like, try to make it sound a little bit better. Like, I, I just, I, I feel I feel so awful for the people and, and for what's going on down here. Although, again, it is, it is pretty beautiful. There are 28 hairstyles you can choose from that are approved by the government. For men, a lot of them are based after the, the leaders, so you, you get hairstyles that look exactly like the leaders. Even for women's hair, it, it's, it's controlled down to length so like if you're single you have to have super short hair if you're married you can end up getting a little bit longer you can add a few inches to it but like it's just like dude, you can't even get your own haircut you can't wear the certain clothes you want to wear blue jeans are outlawed because it's a symbol of america it's just like that there is no individuality you have nothing in life that, that's yours you can't choose where you live you can't choose what job you have that sort of thing like everything is is curated for you and that's that's just really really sad to think about and there are strict strict penalties if you don't listen like I wasn't there there was some there's an American was it a college kid or a, a high school kid and granted because he's from America he was probably treated even worse but he was on like some sort of a school trip or something right I might have this wrong but apparently he tore down a poster in a hallway and ended up getting beaten and put in prison for many months eventually our government was able to talk to, to North Korea and, and able to come to a deal to bring him home. He came home on a plane and he was so badly beaten he was in a coma and then he died. And it's just like, it's crazy. Here there's a three generation rule. So, you know, if your infraction is bad enough, which think about that, somebody rips down a poster, they got beaten to death. What infraction isn't bad enough? But uh, if the infraction is bad enough, they can put up to three generations of your family in prison and, and stuff like that for what you did. So you do something bad, your kids, your parents, and your grandparents can all be sent to prison, to prison camps, or whatever else for something you did. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine your grandchild is like some, you know, stick it to the man type guy and he does one little bad thing and you end up getting thrown into a prison camp when you're when you're a grandparent like that that's just dude that it makes me sick to my stomach like it was honestly really really hard to to read and do some research and stuff before this this episode because it it's just it's so bad uh apparently it has been getting a little bit better in in recent years and recent decades and hopefully with time and as as generations you know, come about and, and potentially new leaders come around and stuff like that. Hopefully life gets better for these people. But uh, as of right now, it is, it, it's just awful. Although there is, there is one good thing. Let me, let me check to make sure we're going the right way. First of all, we want to be going, we're actually pretty much exactly where we want to be going. A little bit, a little bit more this way. Something like that looks pretty good. Uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel though. All right. So if, uh, if you live here, and you decide you want to defect, you want to leave the country, you want to go live somewhere else, which why would you? Because this is all you know and you don't think there's anything better out there. But if somehow you think you want to leave and you, you've had enough and you want to leave, the government will help you leave. They'll allow you to leave for the small fee of somewhere around eight to $16,000, which I mean, yes, that's a lot of money, but you know, you could save that up. You could do that, right? Not really. The, the, the wages here are awful. Now keep in mind a lot of the, the you know, your, your necessities are covered by the government, so that is good when it's available, when there's not a famine and a shortage and stuff like that. Uh, but salaries are oftentimes somewhere around the 25 cents an hour mark. And uh, the, the average income for, for an adult there is not more than $1,800, uh, oftentimes closer to 1000 so think about that. I, I mean, obviously you're gonna have to spend some money to live. So let's let's say let's say you can save five hundred dollars a year, 
and and let's say we'll go on the low end of the price it's it's thought to be a little bit higher than eight thousand but let's say it's eight thousand dollars you're, you're saving five hundred dollars a year that's going to take you 16 years of saving to get one person out and that's best case scenario how are you going to get your whole family out how are you going to get your wife and your kids out now some people do end up leaving and they'll go to like south korea or china or something like that they'll end up working in those new places where they do have opportunities for higher paying careers. South Korea has fantastic, you know, job market. They make, they make a good amount of money, not as much as here in the U S but a good amount of money. Um, so they, they'll end up going there, they'll make money there and then they can come back and they can bring their family out, which is good. But you know, again, we go back to, they don't even know a, a lot of people probably don't even know that's an option. Don't even think of that. Don't even want that because they know what they know and, and what they know is, is North Korea. So it, it's just, dude, it, it's just awful. It, it really, really is. Man. I'm going to leave you guys here. I'm going to give you guys like a little, little you know, montage type thing. We're going to keep on heading up towards uh, Pyongyang, which is, is up here. Got a little bit of drift here while we're talking about that. It's time to get in our feelings. Let's reflect on everything we just learned. And uh, I'm going to see you guys when we get to Pyongyang, which is actually a very beautiful, very modern, very well upkept city of the future basically it is a gorgeous city bustling with opportunity kind of but it's it's got fantastic architecture and and it's anything but what the rest of north korea represents and is and we'll talk about that when we get there on the horizon this is Pyongyang it looks like Pyongyang but it's I believe it's pronounced Pyongyang so uh, we're, we're coming up on it right now I mean you guys can see around us we've got some bigger you know settlements and little outskirts and stuff mainly kind of a lot of, of smaller stuff little farmlands rolling hills and stuff like that but um, this here this like I said it's actually a really really beautiful like modern advanced city and it was built purposefully that way. It's kind of like a facade. So this city was built and it's upkept to be kind of like representative of what they want you to think North Korea is, but it's not at all. You know, most of it's very smaller countryside towns and villages and stuff like that. Very poor, not a lot of food, just, you know, third world country or maybe even worse. Yet this is this beautiful modern city with tons of crazy architecture and, and, you know, the deepest subway system in the world. One of the most advanced, you know, technology cities, beautiful buildings and all kinds of stuff like that. Because they, they want the rest of the world to think this is what North Korea is. Now, obviously, we know it isn't in this day and age. We've got satellites and stuff like that. But they, this is what they want you to think it is. They want you to think their people are, are you know loving life and they're rich and they have all this you know opportunity and it's just like north korea is the place to be when in actuality it's not at all this this is just a shell and we'll, we'll talk about that so this is actually a uh, a closed city so around three million people live here of the 25 and a half that live in north korea it's it's the capital it's the the you know busiest most bustling city so if you're lucky enough to live here that's good but like i said it's closed so to be able to live here, you have to have permission from the government. And uh, everything is, is controlled, like going into the city, coming out of the city. You have to have permission. You have to have permission to live here. If you have permission to come into the city and you're coming into the city and your car is dirty, you get fined for it. And I think you get turned around and you, you, can't, you can't be there. Everything has the, the highest level of, of expectation and cleanliness. Littering is a serious, serious offense. They want this to be this picturesque, perfect city and and keep in mind here in flight sim it takes flat satellite imagery and just kind of assigns random buildings and stuff so it's a lot more beautiful than this you know this looks like cookie cutter apartment buildings all over the place i'll throw some pictures up on screen for you guys it's got magnificent architecture some really cool buildings which we're going to go and explore and stuff but uh it, it's all facade like i said it's all a hundred percent fake they actually, they, they even say, and again, I don't know if this is true or not, but they say that a lot of the shops will have these immaculate displays of food up in the windows to make it look like, oh, our people are so well fed. They've got all these opportunities to shop. It turns out a lot of that's fake. It, it's like plastic and styrofoam painted fruit and, and meat and everything else like that. Because again, 
overall, it's a fairly poor country, and they sometimes fail to feed their people. So it's it's kind of crazy in that regard. This thing right here, this is insane. The Grotto First of May Stadium. So it's the May Day Stadium. This is the largest sports stadium in the world by seating capacity. It seats 150,000 people. By comparison, the biggest one we have here in the States is the University of Michigan football stadium, which seats just over 100,000. So it's it's over 50% bigger than that. And I mean, let's let's be real. This is gorgeous. This this is a really cool, really amazing looking stadium. Just magnificent from like an architecture perspective. Look at all that seating in there. We've got the, the soccer pitch, football pitch going on, track around it, that sort of thing. So like that, I mean, that that truly is a glorious piece of architecture. And, and there's tons of that all throughout that doesn't really get used. And, and again, it's not really representative of of what this country is about we're actually we're going to try to fly i think it should be i remember seeing a little triangle river it should be over here we're going to try to fly, fly to this hotel which is called the ryugyong hotel it looks like a very evil building like an evil headquarters or something like that it's this cool skyscraper shaped kind of like a pyramid type thing i'll so throw some pictures up on screen there's that triangle of water i don't think they have it Dang it, that would have been that would have been cool if they had it coded in. But uh, this is one of the biggest buildings in the world. It's meant to be a hotel, and it was built because back in the 80s, I believe, South Korea built one of the tallest buildings in the world. And North Korea was like, oh no, we're the better Korea. We're gonna build an even bigger one because we're the most impressive. We have the most money. We're the best, you know, nation. And uh, they built it, they finished it in 92. But they didn't actually finish it. There's nothing inside. It, it, there's there's no rooms. You can't stay there. There's no you know electricity. There's no front desk. There's there's nothing. It's just the shell of a building. And and that's like that is the quintessential idea and, and you know kind of representation of what a lot of this city is. It is a shell. It, it's just meant to look beautiful, meant to to show signs of power and wealth and stuff. When in actuality, a lot of it isn't at all. Some of it is. I, I, I mean, you can see all these nice rivers and stuff running through town and little parks and stuff like that all through here. So some of it's got to be really beautiful. The architecture is really unique, really cool and stuff like that. But a lot of it's fake. And, and it looks like a land of opportunity, but it's not at all. You know, you're still... Every facet of your life is controlled. I would imagine you're controlled even harder if you're living in this main capital city than anywhere else. Because again, they want to keep up that face. They want to keep up that facade. They want to make people think there's something that they're not. This thing right here, I believe, it's like some really cool science building or something like that. It looks like they don't have this one actually professionally coded in or anything like that. Again, a lot of this is just flat satellite imagery, so it's 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 not going to be able to pick up the, the super unique architecture. It looks like it kind of has a bit of the shape of it there, which is interesting. But, um, yeah, I mean, th th this could be beautiful. You know, think about it. Th think, think about how amazing a city like this could be if you were in Europe or, you know, over here in, in one of the Americas or something like that. Uh, it, it could be really, really cool. But it, it's just, you know, again, it just breaks my heart to think about what's going on down there. And I, I hope with time with new generations and stuff like that. I, I hope it can change. I really, really do. What do we have going on over here? Is this some sort of a athletics complex, it looks like? We've got a bunch of buildings. That definitely looks like some sort of a track or something. See, like that, I, I, it's just crazy. Look look at all this crazy stuff on this nice little island in the middle of this beautiful city in a beautiful country. But it's just, I mean, man, I, I can't even really call it that. I, it, it breaks my heart to call it a beautiful country, so... Um, yeah, that, that's, you know, a bit of a look at North Korea. We, we've seen everything from the, you know, barren farmlands and, and, you know, outskirts of everything to this big bustling city of opportunity that is really all just kind of a, kind of a big fake. So, um, man, bit of a depressing episode, if I do say so myself. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much. Uh, this was definitely one of the more requested locations for us to fly to so uh, i appreciate it if you guys have any ideas on where you want to go next feel free to leave comments down below i'm always looking out for new locations new destinations to bring our faithful travelers and uh 
As a proud member of T. Martin Airlines, I thank you for joining us on this video. If you could, drop a like on your way out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you don't drop a like, I'm just going to go ahead and push you out. You're going to be stuck here in North Korea. <laughs> Good luck with that. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Peace out.